There's a gold mine of bits inside this box. Spiky bits. <laughs> Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we are checking out the new Ambot for Necromunda. This is a uh, one of the new releases this week. You got a lot of Titan exclusive upgrade sprues that you can pick up separately for your robots, as well as the orc buggies from Speed Freaks. But since all that's well, pretty much, pretty much, we've covered that already here on the site. So check the YouTube channel and SpikyBits.com for more on those in the past. But this is brand spanking new and has lots of conversion possibilities so i thought we would uh, jump right into this one here so the new necromunda ambot automata is 40 dollars us and you do get two in the in the kit so i was kind of worried about that man i hadn't checked anything i was just like oh they show them poses no you actually get two for 20 bucks or for 40 dollars. so they're basically 20 bucks each which i thought was pretty neat so solid uh so it seems to be solid value so far when you start comparing it to some of the admex stuff like the uh the catafrons and things you know for it, it seems right in line with what they what you would expect them to charge uh although you know every hobby is expensive i think we can all agree so you get two different kind of poses here and you can kind of see they're basically armed with the same type of stuff here some pincer claws with like the buzzsaw type deal and then you've got the faux uh am bull kind of pincers here a little mantis looking kind of thing and some um, toe hook sort of things and armor plating shoulder pads and uh, haven't really kind of dived into it yet and we're gonna put this bad boy together because we got a little bit of time today which is really swell I'm gonna kind of work on this so you're gonna get two of the 40 mil bases which I think are pretty neat from games workshop they started out a little not happy with the the quality overall of the uh, of the detail in here but as they've really gotten uh, the, the years by in, you know kind of in front of them they've really worked on their design some so I definitely like the Necromunda bases for sure I can 100% recommend those I think I think they're pretty tight and they'll work for a lot of different uh, armies out there too so the sprues themselves here you can see they look very similar right like you're, you're looking at this you're like wait a minute these are literally almost the same and as far as I can tell they are just glancing at them uh, you just get two of the same sprue. This this little head's uh, a little off to the side right there. But from what it looks like, they're two exactly the same sprue. So that's kind of cool to see too. It definitely saves Games Workshop money on development costs when they're literally the same thing in here. Now, as far as instructions go, let's jump into that and kind of see how they're made here. All right, I had to zoom out a little bit, fit this all in the frame right here, but now we can get a better look at it. So I've been scratching my head trying to figure out how you have two exactly the same sprues and can yet uh, produce two separate looking kind of poses. So I'm sure there's probably some pieces in here that are duplicated. So they have a Ambot AB torso right here, which just looks to be your typical left, right. And then you got a front uh, back plate, top armor plate, some wiring and such, and a head uh, that looks like you can have what two different sets of little pincers right there so that's cool to see so you got two different head options or two different pincer options right there and then you get into the right arm and i don't think and they got wiring and they got the little buzz saws that don't look like the buzz saws would be separate on their own so they're going to lock in the top here and some sort of melt a weapon that goes on here and you have a couple of different options on weapons right there and i like that now i don't remember seeing two different arms on here no there isn't so the arms are gonna be very similarly posed depending on which one you look at. But I guess if you flip them up or you flip them down, it doesn't quite matter. So GW has really come a long ways with their design, not just from a hiding the mold lines and hiding the gap standpoint, but really from a uh, making the same pieces work for kind of you know saving money on development costs because plastic injection molding, while it has come down in price from what I understand, is still quite expensive. So here's where I think things are gonna change up a little bit is there's probably going to be and it looks like we just saw them there two different sets of legs yeah two different sets of legs right here with two different sets of armor plating and it looks like two different waists so here you have a waist 37 which is right there and then you have a waist 54 which looks to be doubled up so you can pick whichever one you want for oh and there's only one pair of mandibles and only one head, I guess you can just attach them differently. Huh, okay. So, so far I like what I'm seeing here. 
very cool. The arms go together and you've got sub-assemblies here. So this is going to lock in. It looks like a hex of some sort. Now, like I said, we're going to put this together, but I'm just kind of getting an idea, getting a feel for the kit. And you got some armor plates on the shoulders that are going to go on here and some sort of rear targeting feed maybe or something. It kind of, oh, so he's got eyes. He's literally got eyes in the back of his head. <laughs> That's neat. And then there's Ambot B, which is 11, 8. Let's see if it's the same arms here. 11, 8. Yeah, it's the same arms. So they use the same arms. It's just different sets of legs. So in theory, if you buy this kit, you're going to have two bottom sets of legs. And I'm almost wondering how those would match up to a Space Marine Dreadnought because these seem to be on... These are 40 mil bases. Oh, wow. It's going to be way too small for a Space Marine Dreadnought. But that would be cool to have like a different walking Space Marine uh, Dreadnought there. And then you put all the army plating on, the tow hooks and things. And I think I think just by a, a, a subtle shift in the waist and a couple of different posings on the legs, the top is all pretty much the same. And I guess you position the mandibles a little differently based on what you want to do here. Six. That you can have that Ambul Construction 22 with the head and the head just goes on. They don't show you the different head. Okay, well, I think that's enough. We all get the point here. You got 51, 52, assembly 38. Is there one that already, oh, there it is. Okay, so there is one that already has the mandibles on it. All right, easy peasy, we figured it out. So let's uh, let's get to work on this and then we can do some size comparisons with the actual Ambul Maybe Space Marine Centurion. What else is on 40 mil, 50 mil bases? I don't know. I'll dig around and see what I can find and come on back and show you what we're working with. All right, so we've got the sub assemblies uh, assembled here and it's actually pretty, uh, I, I kind of dig it. It's cat hair alert. <laughs> it's uh, very forward thinking. I like, I like the way they figured out to do all the armor plating in the two different sets of legs. So this is your delineating factor for the kit itself. You're only gonna get uh, or excuse me, you're gonna get two of these. It's the top and the arms that you're only gonna get one set up. So if you can figure out something else to put on here, well, you're gonna walk away with two extra sets of legs, which is kind of neat. Um, I, now, what do you do with them? I don't know. Well, since we got this far, let's uh, let's try to figure that out real quick. So you've got a dreadnought, <laughs> obviously too big, or maybe not. Maybe maybe he maybe he didn't work out legs. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we're doing anything with our dreadnoughts. Uh, I guess you could throw some on there. So it kind of gives you an idea. That's a 40 mil base. So it's going to be a little hard to kind of find something. But that, that one thing that uh, fits on here, like perhaps uh, even the Warhound uh, for Titanicus might actually fit on here. Ooh, that's actually a good idea. Let's go grab one of those. Okay, we have returned. We have the top of a Warhound. Uh, <laughs> not quite, but close. It might be... Uh, <laughs> it would be an interesting conversion to say the least, but definitely doable right there uh, for sure. I think Games Workshop had suggested that you use them for uh, the Cataphrons, which would make more sense because they're on 50 mil. So instead of doing the tracks, uh, you could put them on top of this. Unfortunately, I don't have any, but I could definitely see where it would size up pretty well and work just fine. The question is, do you get extra tops? And I don't think you do. So if you had extra legs and you got extra tops in that kit, that'd be perfect. But I don't think you do, obviously comment below. I actually uh, haven't touched that kit in over four years. So unfortunately I'm not too familiar with it, but I'm sure somebody out there is. So let us know in the comments uh, if you don't mind. Now, this looks like it would potentially make a good amble. Uh, it is a little small. The amble is on a 50 mil base, but it's close, it's close, and you could definitely maybe convert it. I could see you doing some Nurgle stuff. Now, the closest thing that I could find to it, just in my own personal collection here, was a Centurion. So it's very close to a Centurion for sure. And I think once we start looking at the arms, you start seeing the arms and different things here, the arms are very similar. So you could, in theory, put a Terminator top on there, but I think it would be a little small. So it looks to work pretty well with Centurion's type stuff. So you're talking 50 mils, uh, 50 mil base, 40 mil base-ish would work pretty good with this. And then we've got the rest of it where we're gonna glue together, but I uh, wanted to get this on here to kind of show you, but it definitely locks in pretty well. And then you just, these actually don't. You could rotate them uh, depending on how you want to go. You could go up, you could go down. So they're not exactly kind of tied into any one particular. I mean, I, they obviously look good in this pose down like this, like he's kind of hulking along, 
but uh, but other than that now one other thing to be aware of on the diagrams they just kind of draw lines and show you where things go like these wires and stuff just kind of socket under the little elbow joint the inside of the elbow joint and kind of into that recess there really isn't a dedicated place for them but uh for the most part everything else goes together well and the flash comes off pretty easily so uh pretty pretty happy there so i'm going to finish gluing the rest of this guy together we don't have all the bells and whistles on them um, just because we're starting to run run over on time here, but we'll get the armor plates and give you an idea of an exact size comparison to some of the other models out there that you might be more familiar with. Okay, so we got it all together. The shoulder pads uh, are very easy to put on actually, and if you follow the diagrams, the little notches go in the front, and this armor plate is actually notched to go over that shoulder pad, and then there's a little support strut right there. It's all very easy to follow in the instructions, but overall, like we didn't put the little toe hooks or anything like that, the little uh, rear looking light, and I think all the weapon doodadders that go in here, but either way, you should be able to get a good idea of exactly how tall this guy is based on this right here. So he's about the size of a Space Marine Centurion, right off the bat right there, which probably means he's very similar to a Space Marine Aggressor as well. And then you have the Ambol and the Ambot. <laughs> Thicky Steve's, one's definitely bigger than the other. Not sure what you could do to make them similar. And then the Dreadnought, well, it's no comparison right there. Uh, the Dreadnought is definitely uh, bigger, <laughs> so to speak. And if we compare them to a Space Marine itself, do I have anything close? No, I'm gonna have to step away from the camera for a second but here's how he compares to a primaris so just to give you an idea of all that so there he is pretty cool a neat little kit you get two of these like i said you're gonna get an extra set of uh legs depending on what you want to do so who knows lots of conversions i'm sure we'll start seeing these bits out there from time to time and then there's lots of little extra bits that go on him as well so that is about it for this one thanks for watching our unboxing and uh, assembly of the new Ambot for Necromunda, of course, from Games Workshop this week. Uh, great looking kit, $40 US for two of the models there. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.